by, by the, the board of directors in May of 2009. It says April up there. I read this the line well. Phase two, which involved a whole lot of community feedback, a ton of community meetings, a number of community meetings. For me, as a person who's worked in planning for 20 years, was stunned. And including the virtual open house, including the phone survey, all of this work in phase two to try to understand what it is that the, the, the region is saying that lasted and was approved in 2011. So the board of directors endorsed that in 2011, May of 2011, not April, May. Then we had the phase of going through the, the scenarios of developing the concentrated development vision, the principles, all of that work. That was ultimately approved at the end of May. And I know that that process, but believe me, we've heard exhaustively about that process. And I know that didn't go the way people wanted it to, and I know that there are things that if people could do over again, they would do differently. But it was, but getting to that point of approval, I will tell you honestly, is something that many MPOs in the country have not been able to do. It hasn't happened. And the fact that that the fact that you folks, that MPRPC, got that far with a staff that was handed the job of doing this, with no training, no experience in doing a project like this, and no support resources, it blows me away. It blows me away. It absolutely amazes me that this has worked. Not to say that it would have been better if you had a consultant or whoever in tow, but that's, that's an achievement. That's an achievement for this region, and that's an achievement for the people who worked really hard on this, on all sides. Again, that's my perspective. So here's the big questions that this process has been set up to answer. Where are we now? Do we like where we had it and what are our choices? And how do we get there? So I showed a little bit of existing conditions before. I'm going to run through this real quickly. That last slide, prefactual information. And this again is not different from the, the dozens and dozens of MPAs in the country who are dealing with the same exact issues. NOACA in Cleveland is having the same conversation right now. New York City in Northwest Indiana just went through this process. Indianapolis, Denver, you name it, they're all dealing with this. Cincinnati right now is trying to update a plan similar to the process. And this, the, this fundamental information looks the same. How many people remember this chart? Okay, I know you're going to, Joy. And Vice Mayor yeah, recognizes it. All right. This, again, is from back in phase one. Percent change in land use. This is factual information. The lines, actually, again, this is a straight lift from one of MVRPC's presentations back then. That very skinny line down at the bottom that represents the population, and it's a little hard to see here, and we will post these slides so that you can look more closely at them. That line, there's a black line that represents zero, and this is actually showing for the region a very slight percent population change. Okay? So over the course of this time period, the population declined very slightly. At the same time, residential increases much more substantially. Industrial increases much more substantially. Agriculture decreases somewhat. Commercial goes through the roof. Now, just from a very practical standpoint, think about that. If you have not gained a lot of people, but you put that much more land into 
commercial development. Does that look like that can work? It, 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 you don't have to be a wizard to look at that and go, hmm, something doesn't look right. For Montgomery County, this purple bar, again, it's below the black line. Black line is zero. So it's indicating a population loss, not a huge one, but a population loss from Montgomery County. Over the same course of time, commercial has gone. Now, interesting side question. What's different between how we shop today versus how we shopped for, for commercial goods in 2010? Somebody said it. We shop online. Online, yes. Without taxes. Ah, the mayor, the mayor has picked up on a key point there. This is probably, in, in, in laying aside the tax issue for a moment, which is critical. If this looked out of whack in 2010 compared to population, how much more is it out of whack today when Barnes & Noble can't even keep stores open? Same thing for Miami County, just to kind of be fair to everybody. More population growth, but you can see the same, same patterns. Again, this is a straight lift from previous MVRPC analysis. In Greene County, similar situation. When you go back 40 years, though. Yes, that's going back to 1970. You've encompassed dual working households. Dual working households? You have husbands and wives leaving every morning. Many places to go. Mm -hmm. so you see an incredible yes, yes. No, that's that's very true. I didn't say this was, was definitive be all and end all. It's interesting information if you think about it from that perspective. And you're right, there are additional you know reasons embedded in this. Residential, the change in land use is maybe partially driven by increases in average house size, meaning physical plant, right? The average size of a new construction house increased, just per house, increased substantially over that time period. And the amount of space given to each house increased substantially over that time period. Yes, Carol? Over that time period, though, the number of people per household has gone down. That's also true. That's also true. And that decline kind of happens in the middle of that time frame. You know, in 1970, and I, and I haven't looked at the numbers for this region on long-term demographics. My, but my guess is, based on what most of Ohio has done, is that it sort of was still sort of going up into the 70s and then started to go down in the 80s. So you're right. So there's both of those in play. So this is an indicator. It's not a be-all and end-all. But it was interesting information. It was something that jumped out at me as I went through the results. Yes? The other change commercial is we went from central downtown business districts mm -hmm. to malls. Malls didn't exist until about 1970. Right, right. And, and the, this, is, this is not so much about, this doesn't really indicate choices. It simply indicates volume of land dedicated to different uses. And some people would argue that that, that was a valid choice. The fact of the matter is that this is the way the land use has shook out at the top. Showed you Greene County. Now, in phase one, there were some projections that were developed. So this is back in 2008. The projection was for a, and this was standard for the, this was pretty close to what most regions in the Midwest did at this time period. 3% increase in population was assumed over the course of 2000 to 2040. A 5% increase in jobs. Now remember, when I showed you that chart of the Miami Valley region, it didn't show, it showed a net population loss over the previous decades. But we were projecting 3% increase in population over, over that time period, which is very, 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 very slight. And a 5% increase in jobs. Now, I'm sure if you charted jobs numbers, and we do have that chart in here, 5% right now, you would say 13 years into this time frame, 5% might be a little optimistic. But even taking 5%, this again, straight lift from 
a previous MBRPC presentation. So bringing this back to your attention, something you've seen before. Here's project, these are percentages along the side. Here's projected population growth, 3% over that time period. And from 2008 here means that this chart was made in 2008. Projected employment growth at 5%. Calculation, strictly, this is back the envelope kind of calculation. So don't, this is, this is order of magnitude, not decimal points. Amount of land that would be needed to accommodate under typical patterns, employ that employment, that population. Realizing that since 2008, we've seen some changes in how people work and how people live. But, regardless, here is what was summed up from all the local land use plans. And again, this is in 2008. So I had actually been staffed to a conference plan in Springboro. So there's the piece that I worked on right there. And there's, and there's, I would have personally preferred to take the names off of here because it wasn't just those four towns. It was many, 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 many comprehensive plans. They were all summed together, the land and sort of land these plans. That's, uh, again, five pounds of flour, or, yeah, 10 pounds of flour, five pounds of sack. How much more flour are you trying to put in the sack? And how big is the sack? And is the sack true? So there's some of the key questions for you folks to deal with. Across that whole area. I'm going to run real quickly through a couple of things for the public engagement. Now, huge amount of public engagement work that was done. I'm going to focus on one thing, which is that survey. And I'm going to focus on the survey because I've got the strongest handle on the methodology for that survey. And because, you know, sometimes people have, have concerns about about public meetings. I've run public meetings all my life, or all my adult life. I didn't run them when I was three. That's probably a good thing. The, you know, you can't always control who comes to a public meeting, right? All right, so let's put that aside for a moment. But even looking at this survey, now, I have some training in survey methodology. It comes with being a plan. This again is a straight lift from the presentation that Wright State did when they presented the survey results. That's why the, the format changed. I just took the, took the slide straight out. So here's a process. Random survey, random sampling, quota sampling used, cell phone sample was used. From a methodological standpoint, I don't know that anybody could find anything substantially wrong with how this was done. I'm pretty comfortable with this. And again, this report is fully available on the website. Another slide exactly as they have it. Land use development in the Miami Valley should, and it gave a variety of choices. 94% said we focus on reusing, revitalizing old buildings and vacant lots. 88% said be located near existing assets. 80% said be located near major highway or roads. 71% said occur wherever there is demand. And 46% said continue to grow at edges of already developed areas. Okay. Respondents who selected as important or very important a variety of admittedly abstract community attributes. They're asking about these things in principle, not about in your town today when the zoning hearing happens. We know that that can be a little different. So, but pretty high numbers for, let's see, the highest one is living near parks and natural areas, living close to work, uh, maintaining and increasing farmland, retail shopping choices, um, living near recreational facilities, this I thought was really intriguing, and I liked how they presented this. So the green, in cases, they had to have a pretty substantial majority to tag a priority here as green. It's not just, you know, like down here, there's a 10 point difference between these two, but they tagged them as yellow. So this is a pretty conservative interpretation. Reuse revitalized properties and existing neighborhoods for housing development. 
We use and revitalize properties in existing business districts for business development. We use and revitalize properties in existing neighborhoods for housing development. Note that this doesn't say in downtown. Downtown whatever. This says in existing. All right? Focus housing development around regional assets. The second slide. It's not quite so many that obvious. It's important to live in an area with water and sewer and utilities. It's important to have privacy. It's important to have easy and well-maintained access to major roads. So you've got some pretty substantial public feedback. If this were all that had been done, a lot of my consulting colleagues across the country would say, mm, that was pretty good. Do that in public, public meetings, you're done. You guys did much more than that. So then we get through that process to these preferred future landings. Now that concentrated development vision, hopefully as we look through those, those survey results, it kind of jogged. Existing, capitalize on existing resources. You know, tie into existing areas, all of that kind of thing. One of the things that was very surprising to me, and I'm a girl person. Gee, that should be a surprise to anybody by now. You're going to have to learn to tap things or something, Brian, and come. It's <laughs> like, yeah. We had the, the map, which we had a lot of discussion about, but we also had these principles. Now, I want you to take a step. We're going to hold off on the map for a while, but I want you to take a look at these principles for a minute. Build on assets. Preservation. Cooperate. Be efficient with infrastructure. Some pretty decent principles. Sometimes those, I think, got lost in the debate over whether one parcel should be one color or another. But you've got some very strong principles here to hang the hat on. And I'm going to make a point of pulling you back to these. The map, we know, was the proof. Right? This is the concentrated development vision. This plus this. Don't think it's one or the other. It's the two of them together. But it's, this is, what we do with this map, just like what we do with this, these vision principles, this depends on you guys. This depends on what you feel needs to happen for the future of the region. So, the goal now is to create that toolbox. How do we get to a more efficient use of land and use of the resources that we have. And we've got a variety, we've got some steps to go through to do this. We're going to start with some basic ideas, some basic principles, taking those, those asset, those items that I just identified and taking them down a little bit farther, a little bit more concrete, but not fully. We'll use that basis to figure out some tools and then we'll work on how to implement it and how to know in the future whether you as a region are making progress. Okay? So now, I want to have you do something. This is going to be pretty simple and pretty low tech. 